Okay, so this is just a little video that I'm going to go over and address some of the problems that I'm having with the M2. And, um, you know, because uh, basically I just pull it out like maybe once a year or something and go to use it. And then I don't remember how the heck to use it after all that time. And I seem to always have the same problems uh, from the get-go. Uh, the main problem that I'm going to address is um, that once you've balanced it, um, it has this problem where you turn it on and it, the camera shifts to the side and then it shifts to the other side and then back to the other side and then it shuts down. And this happens every time, like once a year when I go to use it, I don't remember what the heck's going on. So I thought I'd make this little video and some tips on uh, how to operate it and get it up and running and stuff like that. Um, so let's get into it, right? Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're actually charged uh, the two batteries that are in here and they're very specific batteries they're not D cell they're a rechargeable battery that has a certain amount of output um, and basically you unscrew right here or right here and the two batteries are in here and the batteries face up in the upward direction with the positive at the up negative at the bottom now, one thing you don't want to do is to try to charge it through this little USB port um, because you'll probably fry your little computer in here because this is actually for updating the firmware and directly, directly connecting to your PC only. Um, you connect it to a 5-volt charger, uh, probably destroy it instantly. Another thing right here Another very tempting little port that you might want to try to charge your batteries with. Uh, do not use that. That is a very specific uh, type of port that um, you have to buy a special adapter that only seems to work for this uh, Crane M2 unit. Um, and it's supposed to be a little cord that goes from here and it attaches to your camera. But that's only if your camera is compatible um, that would operate like you're playing record from this little button down here uh, for taking photos or video or zooming in and out. But um, my Sony A7S II is definitely not compatible with this uh, crane gimbal. So that's why it's not hooked up and it's just not going to work. Okay, for the charger, for the batteries for the crane 2, um, you're just going to use like a 5 volt uh, phone charger just your standard um and just the standard like cable for like android and then um it plugs into the charger which you know uh says the crane's name on it has a little logo and this is specific for bat uh, charging the batteries that came with it i think they're 3.7 volt batteries and as you can see like there's a little plus right there and minus so you know which ends go up plus obviously goes up um these lights should be red uh, when you start charging and by the time you're done they turn blue so if they're blue uh, your batteries are charged and ready to go um, also you can plug this in to a car charger if you're on the road uh, so for the firmware update, if you decide that you want to do that, um, you might not need to, but uh, you just go to the zyrenetech.com um, and then you're going to have to figure out which one of these is yours. You know, it's kind of confusing. There's the Crane, there's a Crane 2, Crane 3, Crane M, Crane Plus, um, Crane 3 Lab. Uh, Crane M2. Uh, mine actually is the Crane M. And if you look right there on the servo, really close, you can kind of see the the logo that's on um, the servo, and that will tell you which one you're dealing with. I don't know if you can see right there. Um, that's probably the best way to figure out which one is which. Um, and from here. Uh, you can go into the firmware and you can download that. And if you're going to do that, 
firmware operation, attach it to your USB and then directly to uh, the side of the gimbal through uh, like an Android uh, charger uh, wire. And also very important is the user's guide. Uh, might as well download that. It's got a lot of uh, important stuff in there to look at and should help you figure out how to operate this thing. Also, before you start this calibration process, make sure that you have removed the camera and the camera mount and quick release mount. The best way to do this is just to release the quick release mount and remove that whole section. Then you should remove your tripod at the bottom as well. Now, basically you're gonna have to put this camera into five different crazy positions. You see the little uh, gray dots at the bottom. There's five of them. You have to advance to each one and it only gives you this teeny little ridiculous photo on your phone and it's a nightmare. You can't even like pinch and zoom in to see what the heck's on there. Honestly, I had to use a magnifying glass and even then it was just like crazy to figure this thing out. But luckily about five, 10 minutes, I was able to pass through all of those. And I don't know, it seems to be working, but it's, it's a real nightmare. And no video can really show you like all the crazy positions that you're supposed to be in. Um, each time you get into a position that you think might be right, um, you're gonna have to hold it there for like maybe five seconds and then see if it's advanced you to the next one. Um, Cause if you don't, uh, what, and one thing that uh, seems to be pretty consistent in each one is that one of the servers is like flat against uh, whatever table you're using and you really need to hold it flat against the table with your hand for about five seconds. And that seems to be a huge part of the calibration process. Now, when you're doing this calibration, do not attempt to connect your phone via like um, USB or something directly to the uh, tripod. Um, you have to do this through Bluetooth. So first of all, you're gonna power on the Crane 2. Um, now it's gonna send out a Bluetooth signal. Then we're going to open the app and then press connect, uh, which you should see like something like a Crane F2 or something come up and connect to that. And then go back to the main screen um, and uh, go into uh, the menu button calibration. So as far as balancing the camera on this gimbal, uh, you can watch, uh, it's a good idea to watch a balancing video on how to balance the camera on here. But at the end of the day, you're still gonna be very confused and you're gonna have to come out here and start moving these little servo adjustments around yourself and figure it out um, to get the hang of it. So I'm just gonna give you a quick, a uh, few quick tips on like, the basics of like how to figure out how to balance this thing now first of all you can't leave your camera strap on there or when you're moving the camera is going to rock back and forth every time your camera strap swings back and forth so you got to take your camera strap off and that's kind of a downfall of this thing uh, another thing if you change the weight of the lens drastically like you go to like a, a telephoto zoom lens or something you're going to have to rebalance this at least a little bit um, mainly I just shoot with my, um, let's see, 28 to 70, uh, lens that came with it. And really like, I almost never use any other lens. Now real quick, I'll show you, uh, the problem that started this whole video that I, I was, seem to be dealing with every time I pull this thing out and I don't realize what it is. So now I have a video, I'll be able to remember what the heck's going on. So basically I balance the camera like this and then I turn it on and all of a sudden it goes like this and then it goes like this and it goes back like this and then it just kind of turns itself off. And over and over again I do that and I don't, I don't know what the heck's going on. Um, and it's kind of ridiculous because this shouldn't even be something that could happen. 
But here's the reason why this happens. And I'll tell you real quick. You can balance the entire camera with this servo on this side of the camera and it's completely backwards. And this little computer in here knows it and I think it's trying to tell you that you balanced everything backwards, but uh, and maybe it's trying to flip the camera over, I'm not really sure. But I'll tell you, uh, this servo absolutely has to be on your right side. And so that's next to your all your adjustments and your, uh, you know, your movie on off buttons. I actually use the C1 uh, because I programmed it a little different, but you know, all your buttons are going to be on this side. This thing has to be on the right, and that's the servo with the little logo. And back towards you, uh, at least with this model, is going to be the Chinese writing is going to be where the screen is. Now, I'll take a second and just show you uh, with the A7S II um, and the standard lens that comes with it, 28 to 70. Um, these are going to be my adjustments. This part, as you can see on the bottom, is about halfway centered. And then this next servo is all the way out as far as it can go. Now this is very important, this third servo right here. There's no way around this. Um, this has to be dropped all the way to the bottom. So as low as it can possibly go, or this thing will just like, it'll either lean forwards or backwards and there's no way to balance it until you drop the center of gravity like all the way down on this servo right here. So that's really important. So you can see that one's dropped all the way down. Now my quick release plate, which is this piece right here, um, that is slid all the way forwards and I think all the way off to the side as far as it can go. So this should be, you should be able to turn this. Now the actual little plate right there, um, the mounting bracket that's holding the camera that's attached to the quick release plate, um, that is just gonna be completely centered with it. Now the last adjustment is this little weight in front and it slides right and, back, uh, right and left. And um, luckily I, I put it in the center and tried to adjust it as, as much as I can. And luckily um, that just ended up staying in the center, but I was gonna fine tune with that. Um, I really didn't have to, so that's good. Also one other really important thing, if you don't have a stand to put this on and a level surface, then you're never going to balance this thing because you can't hold it and this thing be flopping around in all kinds of crazy directions while you're trying to figure out what the heck's going on. It's got to be mounted to something while you're doing this or it'll be a disaster. Um, this is just a little, uh, I think this is like a, a GoPro or, or some other accessory that I just bought off of uh, eBay that has a standard like screw mount for like cameras and it, it works fine. If you don't have one of these and you're, you need to do this right now, um, put it on a tripod stand. Um, but remember this has a lot of weight going on and it's kind of awkward for that little tripod stand with the little uh, thing that screws down like this and make sure it's not like a cell phone one, but you know, something for a full DSLR. Um, but really screw all these locks and everything down because if this thing decides to swing forwards and throw your whole camera on the floor, um, blow up your lens and your camera, you're gonna be in bad shape. So just make sure that it's a very strong situation. Okay, so here's the little controller stick on the Crane M2. And basically what you're gonna wanna know is like, a, this is the power button slash um, photo video button, but uh, since mine is not linked to a camera, it's not compatible. Um, this photo video button does not do anything. Um, and the zoom in and out uh, wide and tight, um, that's not gonna do anything either because of um, this is just not compatible. So, unfortunately, right? So basically, and then you got your mode switch and your toggle. 
Um, to turn it on, you push the power button, hold it for about a second, and it's going to go yellow, and then that shows you that it's on. The blinking that's going on right now, um, that tells you your battery life. So if it's blinking four times in a row and then a pause like it is now, that means like 75% uh, to 100 battery life. When it goes to three and two and one, that means you're losing power. And by the time you get to uh, one blue blink, um, then you really need to charge the batteries. Now your toggle right here is like up and down, right and left. And this one right here, if you push it, um, it's gonna change your modes. Okay, so when the crane first starts up, it's gonna be in follow mode, which only allows you to do up and down. And that's it. Uh, to get to the next mode, you push the mode button once. And now you should be able to do right and left and up and down. using the toggle button. Now, if you push the mode button twice, that's going to take you into following mode. And basically that's gonna tilt the camera um, right and left. And that's all it's gonna do. It won't do anything else but that. Now, if you push it three times really fast, you're gonna go into selfie mode and you should be able to film yourself. So, and if you push it again three times, it's gonna go back to regular mode. Also to turn it off, you're just gonna push that button for one second and it's gonna power down and stop flashing. Now real quick, I'm gonna go through um, how to uh, connect the app to your crane two and how to use it. So first of all, you're gonna power on the crane two. Um, now it's gonna send out a Bluetooth signal and you're gonna go and open up uh, the Zyrene uh, Assistant app. Now push connect and then you should see uh, crane 2F or something similar pop up for Wi-Fi and select that one. And once it's connected, go back to the main menu. And now you should be connected through Bluetooth. Okay, and now on the screen, you're gonna see a red circle at the top of the screen. And basically that circle is telling you the battery life. And the less of that circle that's there, the less battery life you have. Now below that, you're gonna see the servo motor stabilizer values uh, for each of the three servos. And if they're zeroed out, then that means that it's basically balanced. And if they're not, then basically it's uh, not completely straight up and down. Now the more button just takes you to tutorial web pages um, for the website if you wanna go there. And the camera button, um, because my camera is not um, compatible with the Crane uh, 2, um, basically, that just takes me to the camera on my own phone, and so that's totally useless unless your uh, camera that you're using is com compatible with your crane model. Now, in settings, uh, I'm not really sure that I understand all this, but basically what I did with mine is I just put um, Sony um, for the model at the bottom, and not that it matters because it's not pairing with it anyways. Um, I put strong. Um, I think that's for like the Wi-Fi signal. I'm not really sure. And, but uh, if you do change things in here, like if you don't push save, it's not gonna save to the gimbal. Uh, so you need to push save before exiting here. Okay, so now uh, let's go into control. And this is the main thing that you're gonna use with this app. Um, so now your power button up in the right corner, it shouldn't be red. Um, as long as you're Bluetooth connected, um, it may start out red. Like you go ahead and push that and it should turn green if everything's connected. And that means that this app should start controlling your gimbal.
Now it starts out in the follow mode. As you can see, like all that's going to do is like allow you to use the joystick toggle there on the screen for up, down. Um, then you can go into lock mode by pushing the lock button and it's going to let you do up, down, right, left and full is similar to following mode. That's going to tilt right or tilt left only. So if you push those uh, up, down, left, right uh, toggle buttons on your cell phone screen, um, it should be responding. And if it's working properly like mine is and it's communicating, um, you should see your camera moving around. Down at the bottom, you're going to see a little button that looks like a little uh, circle with an arrow. And that's basically the selfie button. So if you push that, it should point towards you and you push it again and it should flip back around and point forwards again. Now the little plus arrow button down there is for centering your, all the values out to zero on the, ser uh, the little servo motors. And that should center your camera again so it's perfectly straight. It's not gonna be tilted to the right or the left or anything. Um, you just push that real fast and then uh, you may have to tap it like two to three times to get all the way back to center, which I don't know why that is. It should just go all the way back, but um, that's what seems to be happening. So anyways, uh, like I said, this isn't a full comprehensive like end-to-end -end video, but it's dealing with uh, some of the problems I was having. Um, some other videos you're going to want to watch if you're new to using a Crane M2 um, is a calibration video is very helpful. Um, also a balancing video to learn how to balance the camera, um, which can be really confusing. Um, and also a filming tips tutorial, like Google that on YouTube. There's lots of great tutorials out there for that. Hope it helped you out a little bit and like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.